Today on Experts Showcase, Cynthia A. Brown, social media expert talking about social media landscape for teenagers, three things you need to know. Welcome to Expert Showcase, Cynthia. Very glad to have you. Social media is obviously a very hot topic. You are my social media lady, as uh, as you uh, have been known as for a while. So we're talking about teenagers, big topic for social media. Give me a little bit of a rundown of what we're going to cover in today's episode. Okay, well, thank you, Mark, for having me. You know, teens and young adults, they're using social media sites and apps on a daily basis. And their social journey can position them for success or derail their future. So today we're going to tell you three things that you can do to navigate the social media landscape and have a positive, engaging experience. That sounds excellent. And when we were prepping for the show, I mean, indeed, we're going to do three things you need to know. I'm going to just run those down so that uh, people can cement them in their mind. So we're going to talk about understanding the power of perception. We're going to talk about realizing the depth of digital content. Now we're going to talk about the fact that the secret to social is sincerity. This all sounds like great stuff, and obviously we're going to deal with the fact that teens live on social media and that they're teaching us, I think, more than, uh, than we're teaching anyone else. So let's take that from the top, Cynthia. What is, what is the power of perception in this realm of teens, social media, all that good stuff? The power of perception is really starting that conversation with our teens to have them be aware that regardless to how much they may hold the opinion, it doesn't care what someone thinks about me, I'm my own person, that at the end of the day when you're looking to matriculate from high school to college, when you're looking to land that first job, it comes down to what someone else thinks about you. And that their network, their social network, that community that they are a part of can be very telling and can create a perception about them that may or may not be their reality. There can be perceptions that are created by the content that they post, of course, themselves, but also content that they may like or share. It creates in someone's mind what they may be about or what they may like or what they may accept. And so I think, again, first having that conversation with the teens and, and the young adults in our lives, letting them know that it is more than just this moment that you're doing something exactly. and that there is a perception that's being created and, and what's the perception you want to create for as you start to position yourself to grow and develop again moving through middle school high school and into college what do you want your, your future to hold do you want to be in a position of having options or do you want to find yourself limited because of actions that you took years prior mm -hmm. Cynthia, can I confess to you that I am so glad mm -hmm. that I did not have to go through my preteen and teen years in this realm because mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, we, we just did stuff, right? And, mm -hmm. and only the people in the room were our witnesses to what we did. And luckily, human memory is, is a fairly, fairly fallible thing, right? And it fades. Mm -hmm. Nothing fades anymore, right? I mean, all these fun and games online have a lasting, you know, a lasting trail and people can find that trail and so you are building your resume whether you mean it or not uh, and you just don't have that perspective as as a kid most of the time although I have gotta say a lot of teens are getting that perspective now I think right hopefully they are starting to see as we at times will have notable figures that will be pulled on the carpet for certain things they're doing yeah. they're getting a, a glimmer but I definitely think it warrants continual conversation and and even the uh, the supposed uh, you know things like Snapchat that that, that vanished we know from recent uh, events with Snapchat getting hacked there is no such thing as as privacy or secrecy if you're going to put things on the web and people just need to understand that so yeah you're you're creating a a perception and it, it's it's not all of you but it's it's the all of you that people can see when they're looking at you online and so you got to think that through you got to think what what do I want people to see when they look at me so. Um, we, we've had that conversation with professionals, of course, all the time. What do you want to look like when people search for you? Exactly. But most of those people are of you know our generation. They they didn't leave that trail behind as they were youngsters. Well, I you know we can go on forever about perception. It's a it's a great topic. It's one that we could probably do an entire show on. But it's only one third of our uh, our segment today. So let's move on to. I get, we're already segueing into it and in what mm -hmm. we're saying the depth of digital content. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. 
excellent and and you were leading that conversation as well is it's that knowing that there's a legacy to what you are putting online what you are sharing with others and just for that moment that you may post something or say that comment it lives beyond that moment there may be a video that you take it can be something that leans towards the realm of cyberbullying. It could be something that's of an inappropriate manner. And you think for that moment it's funny, it's harmless. But now that it's been posted, again, it takes on a life and it has depth to it. Uh, it can be something that not only can be attributed to yourself and, 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 again, bring back that mindset of what perception have you created, but it can have a lasting impact to the person that may be a part of that video or that, that image that's been shared. Uh, something that may continually to bring them hurt or uh, discredit their reputation. So, and on the flip side, on the positive side, is understanding that when there are positive things that you are involved in, if there are sports teams activities that you are participating in, community service that you're doing, academic accomplishments that you're making, those two have the power to position you for success because in posting that information and in sharing that information it continues to live on as well so it, it's it's not all about smacking your hand to say don't do this don't do this it's bad but understanding again the power that's at your fingertips with the social media platforms and in positioning yourself for success trying to minimize any derailment of your future opportunities is just knowing that content that you post does have depth and it has legacy to it. And that's such a hard thing for a lot of people to, to kind of hold on to because in the moment you're in the moment, uh, but it's that lasting staying power that you may not be thinking about. I mean, uh, you know, I forget which, there's, there's a Native American tribe that used to teach people that, you know, every decision you make, you have to think through what's the impact seven generations from oh. now. I'm not sure we have to go quite that far, but but you might certainly want to be thinking what's the impact of what I'm about to post online seven years from now, certainly seven months from now, uh, because, you know, the context can change. And a uh, real, real quick example uh, that just happened in the last couple of weeks, there was, a, you know, there's this concept of a private Facebook group or a secret mm -hmm. Facebook group that's members only. Well, again, people get comfortable thinking they're behind a, a closed door and they start commenting about somebody else that's in their profession. Well, somebody took a screenshot of the chat and, of course, posted it outside of the chat and it created mm -hmm. a firestorm of, of trouble for certain people. So, um, you know, you, you just really have to not censor yourself but be sensitive to the fact that you, you're going to hopefully have a future and that what you're doing now is going to stay behind and that the, you really can't erase things on, on the web. It's, it's being archived someplace whether you realize it or not. So even the head of the CIA got caught up uh, you know, with, uh, with inappropriate emails. Uh, think, you know, it's like, come on, you're the CIA. You should know better. Right? <laughs> well, and I think there's a cure here in your third bullet point. So let's, uh, let's roll over to that because the secret to social is sincerity. I mean, I think that's a, a great principle. So, so let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So the secret to social is sincerity. That means to really think about, you know, think before you act what is it that you want to accomplish with your posting? And, and again, for a number of our teens and young adults, it really is an environment for fun and, and frivolousness and, and just sharing with their, their peers and such. But again, is it harmless fun? Is it good, healthy entertainment? It shouldn't be something that's malicious, that's going to bring hurt, harm to someone something that's going to come back and create a negative perception of yourself or, or the rest of your, your peer group. And so it comes down to you know, thinking before you act and asking yourself the question, the comments, the, the picture that you're sharing, the video that you're posting, would you want to be that person that may be the target of that if it comes down to being something that is malicious or negative or harmful? And in the example that you shared, and, and that in and of itself was a, a good segue, and that someone took a conversation from that private group, screenshot it, and shared it out. And there's two areas of where we could examine. The person who was making those particular comments, Right. you may have fault with someone, but there could be a respectful way that you express that, that fault that you have. 
And then the other person who you know, basically breached the, the confidentiality of that secret group exactly. to say, I'm going to go and, and share this. And what was their intent and purpose? Was it really to make that other individual just aware that maybe there could be some areas in their professional or in their personal life that they can improve because somebody found fault with it? Or was it to really just uh, instigate a, a situation? Right, exactly. And, and so if we all do a better job at... You know, thinking before we act, that would help us to have a I think, more engaging and a more sincere social experience. Absolutely. Thinking before you act, and what I find personally helpful, and, and maybe it'll be helpful to others, is to constantly try to think of myself mm -hmm. as actually being in a room full of people. Because mm -hmm. you know, I think part of what gets people in trouble is that that illusion of privacy. Mm -hmm. Because you know, generally you're sitting alone at your computer, mm -hmm. and you're for even though you're talking to somebody or a group of somebodies, mm -hmm. you're forgetting that there's a huge group of people, and that you know people start behaving differently than they would if they were physically in the room. Would mm -hmm. I say this right in front of a group of my peers? You know, mm -hmm. would would I want to see the reaction of uh, of what they're gonna? think of me or, or mm -hmm. react in, in some way based on what I'm about to do. So I, I think that sincerity and the sincerity of uh, it's a personal relationship, it's a personal mm -hmm. connection even with people you haven't met yet. So. Well, Cynthia, this has been excellent stuff. I mean, this is a, a really important topic because social media is, of course, everything. You know, it's, it's most of the web, I think, for most people at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, teens are the ones right now who are going to live with the biggest impact of it as they move forward. So, as I said, thank goodness I didn't have to uh, have my own legacy captured mm -hmm. in real time with uh, a million mm -hmm. selfies along the way. So. We've been talking with uh, Cynthia Brown, social media expert, the social media lady, uh, public speaker, and we've been talking about the social media landscape for teenagers and three things you need to know. And those three things, just to recap, we talked about understanding the power of perception, and we talked about realizing the depth of that digital content that you leave behind, mm -hmm. and that if you can use this secret to social being sincerity, it might steer you clear of some trouble that you might otherwise get yourself into. So, okay. Cynthia, I really want to thank you for um, being our expert guest today on the show. It's been great information, and thanks for sharing all this great knowledge. You're very welcome. Um, so I want to uh, give people a chance to get in touch with you because I think you have a great deal more to offer than what we can cover just in one, one little episode here. So. You know, Cynthia is available to come and speak at middle schools and high schools and youth groups, and so the best way to do that is by email or by phone. So you can reach Cynthia by emailing excellence at CynthiaABrown.com. And we were just saying it's Cynthia A. Brown because you got to bring your A game if you're going to be excellent. So excellence at CynthiaABrown.com, or you can actually call her. It's old fashioned technology that still works <laughs> just fine. And you can find her at 866 900 8593. So, Cynthia. I hope uh, you know people you know have gotten a lot out of this, but I know that they really should get in touch with you if they want to get uh, this customized to their unique circumstance and yes. unique uh, situation. So, again, thanks for being our guest today, and uh, we'll see you again sometime around the corner, or maybe on another episode of uh, mm -hmm. Experts Showcase. Very welcome. Take care. Thank you so much. And another great Experts Showcase episode, Chris. What should people do right now? Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a, a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button, and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.